Silver Park. Um, you're a year or so retired. Tell us what you've been up to since you've retired. Uh, first part of it, um, just spending time with the family and stuff. Uh, a lot of your time as a footballer, you're living out of a suitcase, um, traveling around hotel to hotel. You know, they're making sacrifices and their schedules around you. So the first six months or so after the retirement, I wanted to spend time with them and go and do things that we we never really were able to do um, while, I, while I was playing and, and committed to playing. So, yeah, just doing that, bit of coaching, getting on the A licence, um, trying to educate myself again in a new new environment in the coaching world away from the playing world because you know it's completely different things and you although you've got loads of stuff in your head you start at the bottom again and you have to work your way to the top. Lauren obviously is home for you and your friends who are involved at the club uh, and you've been involved in some coaching whilst you've been back and uh, what's that been like for you? Yeah I've been back um, back for a couple of weeks I, obviously I've played with Gary at Gary Haven at Coleraine, he's the academy sort of manager here and he jumps in with the first team. And I only really met Tiernan and, and Seamus just after I had done my A licence course. Um, sat down, spoke to them, an hour and a half, two hours later we were still talking about football and, and uh, I loved it. I love how they see the game and um, you know it was perfect for me to be home, um, see family and and do and do a bit here to uh, you know to learn and to educate myself to see what's happening here to see what's happening in the academy and kind of be a, a, a part of it and have have it a, as a part of my coaching journey as I as I was unable or, or didn't play here as a as a player. Obviously, you had a couple of couple of seasons at Corian just before you moved across the water. What are you, what are your sort of lasting memories of uh, being at Corian? Yeah, I, I loved it. Um, loved every minute of it. I was I was quite fortunate that I was able to play in a team full of seasoned professionals. A uh, very strong team. We went went close in the in the league, and uh, you know, won two Irish Cup finals, won, won one and lo uh, lost one, and it helped me massively. And you know, I'm very fond of Coleraine. Uh, still in contact with quite a few of the few of the players from there. Um, have been through, while I've been away, and uh, yeah. I seen them playing last week and against the Crews. Uh, unlucky to lose it to, to you know to a set piece. The Crews are obviously very good at, it, but um, yeah. And having seen Ornan and how he works and how well he's done at St Mirren and stuff, uh, I think you know the club are in a good place and they've been challenging for league, league titles and winning silverware, which is always always pleasing to see from a distance. Uh, what sort of lessons did you learn in the Irish League to have the career that you had? Um, listen, I learned I learned how to play football. Um, I learned how to play football under pressure because you've got fans in, you've got senior players on your case, you've 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 all these things that sometimes in in, in, uh, in, in youth football and happened to me when I was what 21 at the time 2021, 20, which is a really good time to learn and to learn under pressure. Sometimes in England, especially, your kids are getting to 23 and they've never played a league game. Um, but before I went to England, I had between Crusaders and and Corey and I had 200 games under my belt. So when I went, I knew what I was doing and I was able to kick on and prog progress. So you're kind of seeing that now with the likes of Stuart Dallas, who's done the same, Gavin White, um, you know, uh, Paul Smith, all our lads that have gone across and um, they've got a programme running here, which I, I was interested in dipping my toes into and, and seeing what's going on with, uh, with a full-time academy structure and having seen them and how they work. You know, there's a few kids knocking about who are who are good players already. Maybe just weren't undercooked, if you like, about going to England at 16 and a couple more years here of full-time uh, football and the, what they are getting as well as education and a pathway. And they have to do their education to to be allowed to go onto the pitch and keep up with everyone. So it's a it's a real good balance, and um, you know, hopefully, you know that could be rolled out into all the Irish League clubs and more players can, in my opinion, go across the England ready and ready to play and experienced, know what they're heading into and, and have a, a, you know, the longevity at it rather than a lot of our kids who go away uh, too early yeah. and, then, and then return home to play. You, you, know, you mentioned Stuart and Gavin and uh, those sort of players. What sort of advice would you have the players who are in the RSC at the minute who are maybe 
21, 22 and maybe feel that their opportunity for, I know that some clubs like here are going full time, but sort of full time professional football across the water, what sort of advice would you have to them if they think that their opportunity is maybe gone? It's, listen, it's, ne it's, it's never gone, as long as you believe yourself that, that you know it's never never gone um, but the, the best advice and I, I've kind of said it to these kids here because um, they all want to be they all want to be professional footballs they're all worried about going to England well you can't affect going to England the only thing you can affect is yourself here today be the best you can today and focus on being in the Lauren team for instance or being in the Korean team and and that that's all you can affect how you are if you're the best every day you can be you're the best in your Irish league club people take notice people talk about you and that, that's the only thing you can affect you can't think of the bigger picture there's a pathway to get there and it's uh you know smaller steps and the smaller steps add up to the bigger picture which if you do get the opportunity to go across you can then stay there for a long time there was maybe very obvious differences between the Irish League, obviously you went to the heights of the Premier League, that gap hopefully is closing and closing, but where do you still see the differences, full-time football in England or Scotland potentially, as you've been there too, and semi-professional to professional football here? Um, if I talk about here, there, there, there's loads of stuff I've seen here that um, they're trying to put in place, which is the same as uh, professional clubs when they're going right into diet, they're going right into the sports science stuff. Um, all the sessions are timed, the players, it's really, really detailed. Um, I think it has to be because because of the loading on the players. Um, you know, there's a, there's, it's a really good league. Yeah. Um, the product, the, you know, the product's good. There's people coming to watch it. I, lo I love it. I love it like watching it it's it's a really honest league um but as as more teams are go, going full time um there's players gonna gonna get the the opportunity there's a couple of lads here that have have been to england um recently and come back and they were like we're getting more here than we were in league two uh not, you know top of the top of the conference that sort of thing so it's a good place to learn. Irish League, Irish League's a good place to learn for for our young kids who have aspirations of going away. And I would um, suggest or or push any of them to to possibly think about um, stay, staying at home before they go. Because if somebody wants you and you're and you're getting game time, they're still going to be watching you, and they're still they're still going to be there in in two years' time. So mentality is the biggest uh, the detail on what you're doing and that's the kind of things I've been saying to, saying to these kids here it's the detail, it's what you do every day it's what you put into your body decisions you make and the thing about football is there's millions of people or millions of lads out there who want your job so you've got to be the most disciplined, you've got to be the best at it every single day to improve. And um, say people, people now in the Irish League are, are getting that opportunity, but they're also getting game time as well. So they're going, going and doing well. But between Irish League and Scotland, not a massive difference uh, in terms of ones who would, well, the full-time clubs, your Linfields, your Lawrence, your the thing. So, the physical aspect really where they can they, where they can work on things the time aspect if they're full time where they can work on set pieces they can uh, work on patterns of play more where it, sometimes if it's a Tuesday Thursday you're in you just want to run about and play football and there's not an awful lot of coaching involved in it or an awful lot of detail and to me to me the biggest buzzword is, is the detail uh, detail and everything we could talk through your career and, you know, you, you were a favourite of mine because you were a great person for a fantasy football team because, you, <laughs> you know, when, when you started playing the Premier League because of how many goals you scored. Uh, but for so many people, you're, you, you, sort of, you sort of blossomed on the international stage with regards to your leadership capacity and your performances for the national team. It's an overused question, but for so many of us who are supporters and fans, especially in the Irish League, the, the dream is to play for your company or is to, is to represent the land and what, is that, what does that feel like? The first one's as proud as you are of the first one 
the second, third one, 50th one, 120, whatever that Devo has, they all mean the same. It's, um, you know, it's, a, it's an amazing thing to, to do. Um, I loved it. I know all the lads that are involved loved it, or, or do love it when, when they're when, as they're doing it. Um, listen, there's difficult times. There's things that happen that make you think, "Have I had enough?" But walking away is is nearly impo it's impossible to do. And uh, you know, people are talking about the likes of Devo and stuff walking away now, and that'll be a, a hell of a decision for for the wee man to make. And I don't think he, I don't think he will. Um, but you can't describe it. I'm, I'm standing there last last uh, last week, and they're playing the national anthem and stuff and that there, and I was ready just to rip my my coat off and go and join in. <laughs> but obviously can't anymore. But um, yeah, I, I, listen, I, I I loved it. I wish I wish I could still do it, and uh, it's probably what I miss the miss the most. Um, you know, around. My time out in and around the squad, I saw the influence that you had on standards. <laughs> it's probably the polite way of putting it. And you sort of made sure that no matter what training session it was, no matter where we were going, that you wanted the best because you saw the impact it had on the pitch. Where do you think that comes from and why do you think that's so important? To be honest, uh, um, because I went up through all the leagues, I see the I see the difference that all the small things make to you, and I've had to learn that and grow with it. Uh, and I also, as well, because I wanted the best for me, so I always wanted the the best, you know, the best standards for for everything. I, football's one of these things you have to give your 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 best and all the time. And it might sound stupid, but if you if you limit limited ability, you've got no chance. So I made sure that everything I done was right to give me the best chance to perform, and I wanted to drag other people with me as well. So as long I wasn't standing on a soapbox shouting a lot of the time, but um, if things weren't right, I would speak up, or if I didn't think, think, the think. I, I saw <laughs> you would know. <laughs> yeah, but. Um, even now and what I'm doing now I want to be the best at what I'm doing now so the likes of I'm here experiencing this um, I was talking to these guys I played with players from all over the world you know if it wasn't Covid times I would be I would be travelling I'd be using people I know uh, to see how it's done in South America uh, uh, Scandinavia wherever um, to educate myself so I can be the best coach I can be and we go back to detail every day just small small margins make a big difference and uh, you know if you want to you want to be the best at something then you have to drive your own standards and you hope that that brings people with you um, and obviously your international career crescendoed um, on a very wet afternoon in France um, you know and for so many people the iconic image of you popping up at the back post which wasn't unfamiliar because that's where you, you know you got a lot of success but you know that day that game and that experience when you knew it, knew you were pulling on the shirt you know, in an international tournament and then you go and go ahead and do what you did what did that feel like the first the first game against poland was the um was annoying me <laughs> because <laughs> i didn't think we had give ourselves or, or didn't think we had performed as well as we we had it done uh there was a lot of things that weren't weren't sort of right in that game, so we kind of talked about it and saying, "Look, we have to win this game, no matter no matter what." So we put pressure on ourselves, and I think right from the start, you see from the kick off and that there, and Devo went after the ball and he's hunting the ball down, and then the team went behind him, and right from that right from the start of that there, it was it felt like a Northern Ireland performance that had got us got us that far to score the goal at, at the time, and when you're doing it, it's just it's just a job. <laughs> It's your job, it's your role within the team. So, yeah, blank, celebrate. I can remember all these things now when you look back at it and you see the things and you hear the commentary and that, it's, it's, it's really good. But at that point in time, and it sounds crazy, I'm thinking, right, we're winning the game, back to the halfway line. 
um, fully focused and switched back on to, you know, to my job. Especially because you learn as a defender, you're most vulnerable as soon as, as soon as you score. So I'm not thinking about me, how good that is or, or anything in the thing. I'm thinking we need to win this game. We need to get back and, and do it. Um, so you only enjoy it when, you, when you're finished. I'm thinking to myself, and I could, and can I get another goal in, in the game from another set piece? That's how, that's how my my kind of mindset is and and was. And it's only I had never really watched the game back until it was streamed live um, during the um, during the first lockdown yeah. and things. So it was nice to actually sit down and. And watch it back and, and see the game and see see how it sort of how it panned out. But yeah, tremendous memories and something obviously I'm I'm very proud to be involved in. But I say the goal was fantastic. But for me, I took most out of that of how we responded to the first game and the performance we we give as a team.